The last one was Whack-A-Mole 144, and this one is Whack-A-Mole 145. <laughs> that works. Is that good? That works. Whack-A-Mole number 145. As the man said, 45, like 45 RPM, like Michael 45 audiophile RPM or RPM audiophile. I don't know exactly. I don't know the German translation. Uh, that was Michael Fremer, the man who invented analog, vinyl. Actually, one of the, seriously, one of the uh, champions that really kept the flame alive along with Chad Kassam and, and um, Waldo, you know, where's Waldo character? All those guys, they kept vinyl alive. I certainly did not. My friend Coleman did. Um, my late friend Coleman, he was vinyl through and through, and at this point, some of his records are in my collection. So the premise of Whack-A-Mole, for those of you who are new here, I pick five random records, and I just share them, and I talk about them, and I, I tell you anything I know about them. Now, I just got back. The reason you saw Mr. F Michael Fremer there, there's a link below to his newest channel, the... Angle something, <laughs> something angle, tracking angle, angle tracking, the tracking angle. I'll put it a link below. And um, I met Malachi, the young uh, savant, the young audio savant, 16 years old. I met Malachi there. I haven't been to an audio fair in literally t over 20 years. And it was, I had a good time. I went two days. I don't know if I'm going to go tomorrow, maybe not. By the time you see this, I may be there, maybe not. All these little rooms, a lot of old white men, a couple Asian men show up, <laughs> old Asian men, a few Hispanics, um, you know, basically old white dudes. There are a few uh, women. Okay, I, I don't think I need to go there. So you can hear these amazing speakers, these like monster giant speakers that don't sound very good in that room and, and sort of the more modest ones, I think I enjoyed the sound, but I'm not gonna get into that. But I did have a good time. And there were some really interesting things. And uh, if I don't hear another Diane Crawl or Dire Straits record for about ten years, I'm fine. Um, or or the or the uh, that that high vocal part of uh, Dark Side of the Moon was a great a great gig in the sky. Whatever it is, you know they need to like come on. Let's get some let's get some Ramones in there or something. Okay, so five random picks and. Uh, Thank you, Michael. It was a pleasure. Seriously, if he's watching, if you're watching, it was a pleasure meeting a launchman. Uh, Google that. But uh, take care. Support Women in Vinyl. Go to their website, listen to their podcast, buy their T-shirts, support them. Women in the vinyl industry and in pressing plants and mastering engineers in anything to do with vinyl, album cover, things like that. This T-shirt is long out of print, but support women in vinyl. There we go. Co. All right, number one. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Random pulls, and I showcase my record collection. Okay. I've been all in lately, for a long time now, uh, Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds. This is uh, Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds from KCRW in, I believe, Santa Monica, the public broadcasting independent station, and he did a live show with the Bad Seeds a number of years ago. I'm thinking 15 years ago. What? This is 2013, so nine years ago. My math is off. I love Nick Cave. I like that he has these moody, dirgy, uh, sensual, sexual, religious, spiritual records that are very moody and and um, thoughtful and ambient. Then he got has the the loud, dark rage of the right red hand, like it with um, 
well, that's not a Grinderman song, but Grinderman, the offshoot. Uh, I saw, well, the first show I saw uh, after the whole lockdown thing was Nick Cave and Warren Ellis. Fabulous. Uh, this is this came out um, just a couple just a couple years ago, I think. I mean, it was reissued again, but it's it's a great live uh, radio broadcast and highly recommended. So Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds uh, from KCRW, Southern California, Santa Monica, I believe. This ooh, this is a speak of the devil, not the devil, but the angel. He's an angel in my book, one of my best friends that I lost a um, year ago this September, Coleman. That's this is the Coleman collection. And this uh, this is the Sons of the Pioneers' favorite cowboy songs. This is a mid-50s press, I believe, an R.C. Uh, Victor. Now, the Sons of the Pioneers is one of the great uh, cowboy uh, groups, cowboy vocal groups. Started really in the 30s. Over the years, they had different members come and go. But several songs just... To this day, just I melt when I hear them. One is Tumbling Tumbleweeds. So many cowboy bands, especially them, uh, recorded that. I have other versions and variations and reissues. There's so many variations. But if you like great, not just country music, cowboy music, the Sons of the Pioneers um, are just, are, you have to have some of their music in, in your collection. But another song on here that is one of my all-time favorite songs is... Um, cool water 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 and now we're in the still we're in this like 95 degree heat wave and those of you wankers don't tell me climate cha change is not a real thing because this is really rare and look at what's happening in kentucky with the floods and it's horrible but um cool water is a beautiful song written by bob nolan it says right here and it tells of the mir the mirage and it's disaster disastrous effects on men and animals lost in the desert in terms of seeing a mirage you know could that be related to climate change i don't know wind is that the wind mariah mariah oh that's mariah that's it. they call the wind wind remember that some of those brothers take off on that um red river valley but anyway this is great music Beautiful cowboy music is, there's nothing like it. You know, I love it. Hazzy loves cowboy music. Um, <laughs> okay. The digital record that everyone's talking about. Now, this is my original copy of uh, Donald Fagan's The Nightfly. Nightfly. This is great. I know uh, there's controversy now because the one step, there's a version of this, but it's digital. It's a digital recording anyway. Of course, uh, the uh, half of the original duo of uh, Donald Fagan and Walter Becker from Steely Dan. This is his debut, I believe, on Warner Brothers Records. This this was all over. In, in fact, now we're talking about end of the world calamity shit. Uh, MTV period, that great animation of in, in the bunk. I remember that in the bunker uh, during like the atomic attacks and stuff. So we're talking about end of the world uh, debacle here right now. But um, this is a great record. This is 1982. And I love this record. I don't need a big fancy schmancy record. I did get, was it, is it, I can't remember if it's Chris Bellman or Bernie Grumman did a version of this recently. And I, you know, as, as wonderful as that is, OG, OG all the time. So promo, I guess, no, because I used to get a lot of promos around this period. Not a promo. Um, oh, this is a good one. 1971, 51 years ago. Now, okay. This is a good example. I've shown on my channel that there's a whole series of Maslow editions. I realized for whatever reason, 1971, 72, I have a, probably about 25 to 30 albums here that I had that beautiful penmanship. That that look at that Maslow. That's how I I branded my records then. I think is because I was my buddies and I would take records to each other's house and we didn't want them to get um, uh, you know messed up. Whose is whose. So I did that, but no, but this is what I want to talk about. You buy these records that you get smelly, stinky, god awful records and use record shops. This is 51 years old. This is my original copy. Jonathan Edwards, this is his debut album on Capricorn Records and it probably has the original Capricorn. <gasps> that beautiful, look at that. I have an Allman Brothers, uh, the live of the Fillmore with that beautiful label. Sunshine was a huge, out-of-nowhere hit. It, beautiful folk rock, 
uh, country-esque. His second album was Stardust Cowboys, I believe. But it's cowboy. But um, look at this. Look how perfect this record is. This cover looks like new. So those of you, and up until 10 years ago or eight years ago when I moved to Seattle, none of these records were ever in sleeves, exterior sleeves. You can take care of your records. You don't have to wash them. You don't have to pamper them like babies. Just enjoy the fucking music. Anyway, I love this record and it sounds great. Uh, I don't have honk. I used to have honky donk cowboys for some reason. I think I got rid of that in my 95 Purge, which is a big mistake. But this whole record is really good. Well, really well recorded. Jonathan Edwards, love it. He's still alive. He's still with us. And lastly, okay, John Renborn, uh, The Attic Tape. This is a later reissue, unreleased. Uh, this has a 2LP gatefold and a free download. This is a vinyl-only tracks, exclusive, exclusive vinyl-only tracks. Two record set. Of course, John Renburn, along with Bert Jansch, was the original members of Pentangle. Uh, his albums on reprise in this country, it was, is it Tetragrammaton? Not Tetragrammaton. What's the UK copy? In fact, speaking about Michael Fremer, he showed the John Renborn albums, the original UK, which apparently sound better because they don't, didn't add, add, add reverb to them. But this guy's great. His guitar playing, him and Bert Jans had this great, that, talk about one of the greatest guitar duos in any band. Of course, I would argue that the other one, totally different style of music, but was the Fleetwood Mac when they had three, when they had, when they had um, uh, Peter Green, uh, Danny Kerwin, and the third one. God damn it, Mazzy, you're getting old. I know that... Uh, um, Come on. Uh, you guys are yelling it out. Mazzy, you idiot, whatever. I know it. I just, I'm blanking out right now. But um, this stuff, I'm trying to think when this is. This is, okay, Lovingly Master from Old Tapes Found in a Friend's Attic. So this is basically one of those things they find socks. When, once you die, they're going to find tapes or old shit that you, you don't want them to find in your sock and underwear drawer. So you better clean that out. If, you, if you're feeling a little peckish, or no, not peckish, wrong word. That's a British term for being hungry. If you're feeling a little odd, anything you're hiding in your sock drawer, your underwear drawer, extra old condoms, love letters to old girlfriends, whatever it is, get the fuck, get them out of the house. Because this is um, what happens. You're going to put out a record, Danny Kerwin... <laughs> Mick Fleetwood. Oh, I needed. Uh, oh, Peter Green, Peter Green, Danny Kerwin, and Jeremy Spencer. I knew I'd get it. Jeremy Spencer. Three great guitar players. Now, there's other bands that had multi guitar players, but um, some of the great folk, uh, late '60s folk, rock, jazzy stuff. But um, this is actually a really good record, and they found the tapes in uh, somebody's so in, in his sock drawer. Uh, so. Highly recommended. So there you go. Thanks for watching. Whack a mole number 145. Audio file Pacific Northwest Audio Fair Edition. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. I don't ask you a lot, but push that subscribe button. If you're watching here, you're like, you're, if you're not, if you haven't subscribed, you're freeloading. So all you got to do is push that. Don't push the bell. I'm not going to bug you. Don't like, remember, my channel is one of the few big channels or biggest channels that there are no intentional commercials in the middle of my videos. I always push that button so you get commercials and spots at the beginning and the end. Tell those other channels, get rid of the commercials. I'm such a shit disturber. Mazzy loves you. <laughs> and I say thank you for watching the video. Do a close out. Okay. And thank you for watching. And <laughs> wait a second. <laughs> Again? That, we're, we're rolling. And thank you for watching. What? Watching. Let's see. This, oh, this, watching I thought you were a professional. Oh, okay. I thought you were a professional. Okay. <laughs> thank you for watching Whack a Mole 145. And do one more time and say who you are. Oh. And thank you for watching Whack-A-Mole 145. I am Michael Fremer. And what's your new channel? And you're not. Um, my new channel is trackingangle.com.
and Tracking Angle YouTube channel.